John, when it, when it comes to the, the design, um, you've designed a really beautiful barn for Act Two. Um, well, all the design's beautiful, but the, the barn is very striking and it reminded me a little bit of the barn in, um, in Peter Weir's Witness. Um, you've worked with Peter Weir, although not on that particular film. But when I asked you the other day about how you'd researched the look of the barn and of the haystack that's in Act One, you came up with what I guess is now the ubiquitous answer to questions about research, and you just said the word Google. Yes. <laughs> so tell I us... I couldn't live without it. You tell us about how Google is the designer's best friend. <laughs> yes. Well, if, if you're doing research these days, you don't have to go to a library. You just tap in American barns, and up come all these images, <laughs> and you look at them and you distill ideas from them. And that's, the, that's not the only way I designed the opera, but th that was the beginning of the, the idea. And I, I saw one particular barn, which had lots of slats with the light beaming through, mm. and I thought, oh, that's, that's the way I want it to look. So I went on from there. Mm. It just strikes me that um, with Bruce and John here, we should talk just for a moment about the influence of movies um, on, on this production, because certainly in the rehearsal room, you've talked, Bruce, quite a lot about the 1939 movie and how much you liked it and how, how you felt that it was um, a very true adaptation of the novel and that you used it in some respects as a, as a reference point for the production, just on little details like things about the way they carried their bedrolls and various other kind of details. And I was just wondering whether you and John might like to say something about the films in relation to your production. You mean something you haven't just said? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the 1938 or 39 film, uh, which is directed by Lewis Milestone, who, who directed All Quiet on the Western Front, the original one, is, uh, I think, an extremely, extremely fine bit of filmmaking. And, of course, it had the advantage, you see, of being made in California only a couple of years after the novel was written. Mm. And um, <clears throat> so we did look at it to help us with the costumes and details of the dressing in the bunkhouse and, yes, the bedrolls that they slept in. And I, got them, I got the people here at Opera Australia, to, the props people, to copy them more or less, so that we knew what was in them. There was a blanket, there was um, cups and things like that. Because I thought, well, if the film was made at that time by a very, very distinguished director, I'm sure he got it right. And it did help a lot with the authenticity, because although I think um, I spent a lot of my childhood on a farm near Kula, run by my uncle, and I used to watch the shearers come every year to shear the sheep, and they lived in a place that was very like what we have in this. And that helped me a lot, too. But that combined with the movie uh, helped um, to realise the whole thing, I think, the, the details. Anything else? Yeah, John, I mean, how different is designing an opera production from designing a movie, apart from the fact that there are far more scenes that you have to cover in a film than you do on an opera stage? Well, with a, with a movie, of course, you're dealing with uh, absolute realism. Mm. Um, on the operatic stage, it's a sort of heightened realism. Uh, it's not entirely uh, true to life, but um, uh, films are so different. Uh, the, the technique is different. The timing is different. I think I basically prefer to work on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, there are lots of... But working with Bruce, Bruce always insists on realism, so I have to... Have you to sound critical. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I just... I have to sneak in a few <laughs> unrealistic elements. <laughs>